Welcome back everyone to Learning with Teaching, we're in statics and today we're going to solve problem 782, okay? It says, draw the shear and moment diagrams for the beam. The supports at A and B are trust and journal bearings respectively, okay? So, this is our beam. We have a trust bearing at A, we have a journal bearing at B. We have this distributed load, which is going to be 200 and it's about 6 meters. We have this moment at my point A of 600 newtons per meter and then this other moment 300 newtons per meter at my point B. So in order to solve this problem, in order to start drawing the shear and the moment diagrams for this beam, what we're going to do is what? Well, well, you guys guess it. We're going to do a free body diagram. Okay, so with this free body diagram, what we want to do is that we want to um, replace this journal bearings and this truss bearing for the reaction forces. So at A is a truss bearing, meaning that we will have an AY and we will also have an AX. Okay, now at B, for a journal bearing, we will only have BY. Okay, let's uh, not forget that we have this distributed load for my entire beam. So like this, it's height, it's equal to 200. Let's put it in the middle, oops. So we got 200 Newton per meter. Then we have two moments. So one at point B that we're going to draw it, it's 300 newton per meter and we got the one at a like in this direction so in clockwise direction and it's 600 newtons per meter okay all we're missing now is the distance so the distance from my point a to my point b as it's stated in the figure is equal to six meters now with this what we need to solve is we're going to solve for a y and for b y so we're going to start doing a summatory of moments around my point A. We are going to assume that counterclockwise is positive. And what do we have this? The reason I'm choosing A is because we can cancel AX and AY. We only have the unknown of B, BY, okay? So having this unknown, what we can do is that um, we will start doing our moments. We have 600 newton per meter moment going clockwise so we're going to put negative 600 then we have a positive 300 because it's going into the opposite direction to 300 newton per meter at point b then let's replace this distributed load for a big load so let's move this free body diagram a little bit in here we're going to replace this guy for an actual force not a distributed load and it will be equal to 200 its height multiplied by its base which is 6 meter if we apply this we'll get equal to 1200 newtons okay it's going to be placed in the middle which will be equal to 3 meters okay so if we know that and we are doing the sum material moments at my point a so if we're here this force will want to rotate me clockwise so I have negative 1200 newtons multiplied by the distance which is 3 and then finally we have by which want to rotate me counterclockwise therefore positive so by multiplied by the distance which is a total of 6 meters and all this to be equal to 0 so sorry again I'm just going to move this guy around because it's in the middle of my equation so let's just leave it like there so we got this is equal to zero okay if we apply if we start solving for by we'll have by will be equal to y well you'll have positive 600 minus 300 then we'll have plus how much is 1200 it will be times 3 it will be 3600 so we can take this parenthesis out 
and we're going to divide this by 6, okay? So let's plug these values into our calculator and let's see what we get. We get 600 minus 300 plus 3600 divided by 6 and we'll be find out that by is 650 newtons. Now, after we're done with this, what we can do is that we're going to do the summatory of forces in the y direction, assuming that going up is positive. What do we have? Well, we will have a y plus b y minus twelve hundred. So we got a y plus b y, which we know that is equal to six fifty minus twelve hundred to be equal to zero. If we solve for a y, then we will realize that this will be equal to 550 newtons okay now what we can do is that we're going to take this free body diagram and we're going to try to simplify it as much as we can so let's copy this free body diagram now we don't care about ax and either way ax should be equal to zero then we know Ay, which is equal to 550 newtons. And then we have By, which is 650 newtons. Okay? Let's place our distances a little bit more close up. We have our distances in here. And what we're going to do in order to draw our shear and moment diagrams, we're going to start by drawing some guidelines. Okay? So I'm going to draw these guidelines in orange. So like this. Like that. And then I'm going to start drawing our diagrams. So for our diagrams, let's start with the shear diagram always. So this is my shear diagram. And what do I have? Well, if we start at the beginning in here, we will realize that we have 550 newtons going up. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go up 550 newtons. So something around this. Okay. And we're going to say that this is 550 newtons then as soon as i start walking these beam beams all the way to here i have this distributed load that will slowly start pushing me down so if it's slowly i will push start going down onto a point how much is that point well that point will be this 550 minus this 1200 and if you guys don't realize this, this will be equal to 650, okay? So it will be, we'll have to go negative 650, okay? So it will be something around here. And then we have 650 going up by my reaction B1. And we should always end up at my zero mark. Let's remember that this is equal to negative 650 newtons. Now, we have a positive area and we have a negative area. Why is this important? It is important because the moment diagram is the integral of our shear diagram, okay? So, we're, this is our moment diagram. Now, there is also another important part and it is that we have this line crosses the zero axis. And when you are doing an integral and you're doing the integral of a line that crosses the zero axis, you will realize that at that point you will find the maximum or the minimum of your integral. Okay. And we will see what I'm talking about really soon. Now with our moment diagram, we will start with 600 newtons per meter. So we're going to, at the beginning, we're going to go up 600 newtons per meter so let's draw it like, like this now we're going to have 
t slope and we need to do the area of this guy right so since this slope is going like this we're going to have a lot of area in the beginning and then few area at the end so when we're doing our integral we're going to have a big amount of increase like this and then at the end not so much so this is our shape so this will be the shape of our drawing so it all depends on this area okay now i'm going to draw that so like that and then at the end not so much okay so i stop at that point why am i stopping at that point because now from here to here this area is negative so i should have a negative values on my moment diagrams now if we pay attention what do we have well i have a small a small amount of decreasing until i get a big amount of decreasing so we have a small small and then big amount of decreasing okay so we're going to do that and the problem will be how much of that will be decreasing well that amount will be the total of from here almost to the zero line all the way until I'm missing 300 to go down. So, and we're going to go down like this. So, slow, slow, and then a lot, all the way until 300. So, we're going to call this one 300 newtons per meter. And then we called this point in here was 600 newton per meter. And then, since we have this 300 newton per meter, we just need to go down that amount and we should always end up at zero okay this is my zero mark our other interesting point that we haven't have found the value yet is this point over here i'm going to put it in purple okay and this will be the maximum moment that i have and what is this maximum moment equal to well this maximum moment is equal to this 600 newton times uh, 600 newton meter plus the area that we added, right? So we need to find this area first that we're going to call area one. And we have 550 newtons multiplied by this distance in here. But we don't know this distance because this distance is not equal to this three meters, okay? How do I know it's not equal to this six meters? Because we should be in the middle line. We should be in here in the middle line, but we're a little bit more on the left. So we need to calculate that. And how are we gonna calculate how much is that distance? Well, let's see how much, how can we calculate that distance X? In order to do that, what we have is that if on my shear diagram, I started with 550, and I ended up at zero and I know this slope. How do I, what do you mean that you know this slope? Well, this slope is this 200 per every single meter I'm going, right? So I need to find out when this 200 multiplied by a distance X should be equal to 550 Newtons, okay? Because if, I'm, if I am at 550 Newtons and then I need to know when this distributed load, at what point will this distributed load be equal to those 550 in order to start uh, to be at my zero line, okay? We solve for x, we'll find out that this is equal to 550 divided by 200, and if we plug this into our calculator, it's going to be 2.75 meters, okay? And it makes sense, it's a little bit on the left before in the middle, before being in the middle, which is 3. So we know that this x is equal to 3, and we calculate that area, 550 times 3 will be equal to, uh, not times 3, I'm sorry, 2.75, so will be equal to 1512 newtons. Therefore, my moment max will be that area 1 plus my 600 Newton times meter and we'll find out that this is equal to uh, 
oh we made a small mistake in here and it's that this area is a triangle okay so we need to divide this guy by two so this is a wrong answer so we're gonna take this divided by two we will find out that this is equal to 756 newton times meter and if we add that to our 600 we'll end up with 1356 newton stand meter okay thank you guys for watching if you guys like the video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one